what is it that made you, for lack of a better word, abandon that core progressive ideology and go for Clinton instead of Bernie Sanders? Because this is the way that I see it. If someone is super progressive and ideologically speaking, you finally have a candidate who really is talking about social democracy and universal redistributive programs, what made you kind of lean more towards Hillary Clinton as opposed to Bernie Sanders? And I also want to follow that up by asking, what was it that kind of catalyzed this introspective view that you had, thinking maybe I wasn't going about this the right way in terms of talking to people? Okay, that, that, those are two excellent questions. So let me take them one at a time. The first one with Hillary was a combination of personal in other words, I got to know her in 2008. Now, mm -hmm. she hired me. There was a New York Times article when I got hired that sort of sort of uh, confirms what I'm telling you. Basically, the article said, Hillary Clinton hires Peter Dow to reach out to bloggers in the progressive community, right? That's why she brought me on board. And I said, okay, I'll do it. Now, a lot of my friends said, what on earth are you doing working for Hillary Clinton, right, if you're mm -hmm. this progressive guy? And my answer was, look, I want to build bridges between my community, which was the net roots at the time, that's what it was called then, and the Democratic Party leadership. And of course, Hillary represented the pinnacle of that, having been in the White House of First Lady, Senator, et cetera. So I sat down with Hillary, you know, I got to know her, and you know, I started at that point feeling that, you know, certain priorities of, of what were important to me, primarily, primarily women's rights and women's equality and the issue of a, a woman never having been elected president. So I had differences with her on policy issues, whether it was Iraq, of course, because I was an anti-war protester. So so with with Hillary, so I worked for her 2008, 9, 10, you know, during those years. And, and over those years, getting to know her personally, of course, when you know someone in person, it's very different from the caricature, as you said, that, that you had of me and that, I, that others had of her. And so during that period, um, in, because in 2016, I didn't officially work for her. I was just doing it because I was continuing the mission I had in 2008. Now, to me, women's rights and the oppression of women across the globe is a, you know, I grew up in the Middle East, so you know how women are treated in the Middle East. It was mm -hmm. a pr sort of primary issue to me. As Jimmy Carter said, President Jimmy Carter, you know, is one of the great travesties of humankind, the oppression of women and girls across the globe, okay? And so for me on a personal level with, with my family, you know, I felt, okay, getting a woman in the White House and one who is certainly immensely qualified, uh, uh, who I agree with on a number of issues, maybe not the entire uh, sort of like her philosophy of the country, but certainly a woman who I would be comfortable in the White House. So it became a fight for me, Mike. It's like, I'm going to lecture. I'm going to fight the right. And a lot of it was like fighting the right because the right wing takedown of Hillary Clinton is exactly what they're doing to AOC and Ilhan Omar now. Mm -hmm. So it was this, OK, I don't want this right wing system to beat me. It became really personal for me. So in 2016, it's like I'm going to pick up where I left off in 2008. I'm just on the outside of the campaign. I don't work for her. I'm not paid by her. But I didn't. And in 2015, I was praising Bernie Sanders. I mean, again, Google will help people who are skeptical. <laughs> I was writing stuff like, yay, wow, we got Bernie Sanders talking about inequality and we have Hillary who could be the first woman president bringing all these issues so important to, to girls, you know, as a role model. And then 2016, he started talking about the Wall Street speeches and some of those issues. And, and like I said, when you support somebody that strongly, you start fighting back. Mm -hmm. And it just went off the rails. I and I, and, and you know, I apologize for people that I hurt in that process. You know, my wife and I took, as you know, a tremendous amount of heat as well, mm -hmm. death threats. You know, it, it was a year in which, and I've written about this, you know, we lost our first baby together uh, to an ectopic pregnancy. She had emergency surgery. So in the middle of 2016, my mm -hmm. wife is on an operating table, like two months out of the election, could have lost her life. So Man. it was one of those years that I never ever want to relive again. That's one of the sure. reasons to answer your second question is like, what made me start rethinking? But look, you know, the fight for Hillary, once I'm in the trenches with somebody, I was, you know, I was trained, uh, you know, I was drafted into the military at 15 years old. I lived through awards. Like once you're in the trenches, you fight, right? Yeah. You don't abandon that person. And, but the end result of that was like, people now started seeing me as this DNC shill. I'm thinking, oh my God, you know, then, so, so anyway, so that's what happened 2016. I did not agree with Hillary on everything. I certainly don't. I've been critical of her on issues. I don't agree with Bernie Sanders on everything, but frankly, probably had Hillary not been running, I would have been a Bernie Sanders supporter. No mm -hmm. doubt about that, because people like Wellstone and Sanders were the people who I 
looked up to and, and admired in the years before that election. 